I don't have a brand picked out. What I've done is gone into men's clothing. I have searched shirt, pre-owned, sold. We could filter by price if you want to find some nicer stuff. Nike, Vineyard Vines. Let's do Vineyard Vines, why not? I'm familiar with the brand, but it's been a minute. Over here in category, men's and women's clothing are two different ball games. Very, very, very different ball games. It's like football in Europe versus football in America. We're playing American football. We're playing men's clothing. Right now, we're just taking the temperature on the whole brand in pre-owned condition. And what kind of demand is Vineyard Vines overall? This is a really broad metric to apply. It means potentially less than it might seem. So we're in sold, it says 19,000 plus. Do not trust this number, trust this number. This number, in my opinion, in my experience, is more accurate or at least more precise than this number. And there can be a big discrepancy between those two. 19,000, and then we were going to toggle off sold items to 57,345. So that's less than 50% sell-through. The sell-through rate, I think we probably know this, but if you don't know this, eBay hangs on to 90 days worth of sold listings. If you divide the solds by the number of actives, that gives you what I call a sell-through rate. There's some controversy as to whether or not that's a true, proper sell-through rate. It's just a back of napkin metric uh, by which to judge the health of a particular thing on eBay. The higher the better. If the actives and the solds are equivalent, that probably means you'll be able to sell your thing within 90 days of listing it or three months. If we want the real number, the actual number, 19025, we can do this. Divided by 57341, around 33%. 33% in pre-owned condition for a clothing brand overall is not that strong. What this means to me, having done this many thousands of times over different brands and having experience with Vineyard Vines in the past, I know that overall, it's not a slam dunk brand. There are lots of brands that are in 200 plus percent demand for everything in the brand. You don't have to think about this. It's in such high demand, you can just buy it, sell it. A brand like this, that is not necessarily the case. This to me reads as only some of this is gonna be worth picking up, either because it is in demand or because it will be worth enough money <clears throat> that if I have to sit on it for a long time to flip it, I will still be able to do so. If you've watched my channel for a long time, this is probably gonna be redundant, but just in case, covering the bases. So how do you actually figure out what it is that's worth selling? You go into these categories to start with and um, I would just toggle back and forth. If you're just moving quick and you just want ballparks, this number is okay, typically gives you a rough estimate. About a third for casual button down shirts. Most brands, casual button downs and t-shirts are the biggest categories, like the most, the highest numbers. Also notice what I'm doing. I'm, um, after I go to the actives, I'm not going back down here to go to solds or coming over here to a new category and clicking it and clicking sold. I'm going back in the browser to preserve this being toggled on. You can move much more quickly doing it this way than if you had to scroll down and click over to sold listing. So as you can see, the shirts overall and dress shirts are gonna be poor because they almost always are regardless of brand. The sell through on shirts is like 50%. That means that there is a market because you will notice for something like this that there are a lot of solds. 5,000, so in the past 90 days, around 5K casual button-down Vineyard Vine shirts have sold, and these numbers appear to be okay. If you can price yours competitively, if you're really good with eBay, if you've got all the keywords dialed in, your photos are decent enough, and you follow, you're checking, checking, you're checking all the boxes, then um, there could be an opportunity there. Ideally, what you wanna look for, to my mind at least, is Healthy demand. Healthy demand to me means like 70, 80% sell through and up. That means 
the margin of error is small enough that you kind of have to get unlucky to not sell something within 30 days, or you have to do something wrong in your listing, or eBay is punishing you because you, you didn't propitiate yourself before the alter of the algorithm in some cryptic way that they don't tell you about. You get the picture. That's the safe zone. Getting down to around 50% or below, it's not a crazy gamble, but you may be sitting on it for longer and you might have money, sourcing money tied up in that item that you could spend elsewhere. These categories are all gonna have varying levels of demand and largely that is driven by season. So we're going into fall right now. So the previous 90 days were summer days. So I'm guessing that shorts are gonna be relatively higher. Nope, I'm wrong. Not always the case, 1,700, 3,400, not bad. There may be a category in here that um, is doing better. Like sweaters are around just over 50%, 664 to 1,000, so that's pretty good. Outerwear, that's over 50%, just category-wise. Swim, 349, 1,900. See, that sell-through is quite poor. And that's even in the summer. So that tells me that Vineyard Vines swimwear not in very high demand. And when this condition occurs, where there's way overabundant supply for an inadequate demand, go figure, it will drive the prices down to the point where it will be difficult to compete. Well, maybe not. Oh, okay, yeah, the, there were around 2,000 hidden results. You have to be careful with the eBay system. So I was correct. So you're competing with, um, oh, that's a bag of some kind. So this is, what, 11 bucks? All told, 10, 11 bucks. Look at all of these shorts that you're competing with. Now you could get a pair of these shorts, price them at 25 because you don't want to race to the bottom, right? That's bad, as everybody insists to you. So you price it at 25, it winds up sitting in a bin for a year and a half, eventually it sells, and uh, you don't make enough money to have made that whole process worth it. So this kind of thing, I would just avoid. I'm not seeing anything in Vineyard Vines that is leaping out at me as being in particular demand, but that can also be deceptive because there will be certain kinds of garment, even in these categories, that behave different than the category generally, either more poorly or better. So I'm just gonna take a guess. Shirt, let's say 3XL. So we're going, we're hitting two different, two different things here, three to one. Okay, so not a lot of examples here, but this illustrates what I'm talking about. Linen is a more expensive material to make clothing out of than cotton or nylon or polyester or whatever, spandex. It's a natural fabric derived from the hemp plant. You don't need a biology lesson, but linen clothing tends to be in higher demand than cotton or whatever. And it's in especially high demand during the warm part of the year. And also big sizes are worth more. So here is an example of a Vineyard Vines item that is worth targeting because if you look at the prices, these are also pretty healthy prices, over 30 bucks, all of them. If we cleave off the size, it's probably still gonna be good. 215, nah, to 837. So you have to be careful. It's really tough, and again, this is like the thesis statement of this entire channel. I've said this probably 800 times over the life of this channel. You can't trust the brand tag alone and it behooves you to run numbers on uh, anything that you find that you're excited about that you think might potentially be worth money or anything that you are skeptical of that you think isn't worth money, but there's a lingering doubt in your mind of, well, maybe this thing could be worth money. It's been a while since I checked. Usually a good idea to check on the fly when you're sourcing, in my experience. So we did a little bit of digging and this is a brand that's gonna take a lot of digging compared to other brands. But we've gotten the overall picture, which is generally low demand. There are some categories like shirts, t-shirts, casual shirts that are doing okay, that are middling. 
And if you get the exact right item, it can be in demand. So this is on like the lower end of bread and butter in my mind right now, especially because the prices aren't that great. If this stuff was all selling for um, over 25, 30 bucks, and there are brands like that, then it would be a different story. But if we go into the ended recently sold in pre-owned condition, 20 bucks, 20 bucks, it's all flipping around 20 to 30 dollars, even nicer stuff like this around 34, 35 ish t-shirt for 12 bucks. These are not that amazing of numbers. So we are looking for outliers. We're looking for special items. There are special items in a lot of brands, even a lot of relatively undesirable brands like this or brands that people uh, say are too bloated to resell. Ralph Lauren is, can be a good example of that. How do you find those items? A really quick and dirty and easy way to do it is to go into the solds and search from highest to lowest. You will see that lots have sold for some pretty good money. That's where you take multiple items, you put them all in one listing, and you sell them in bulk. Um, lot. Sometimes lots in these bad brands can be high sell through like this. Okay, so here's our first true win. Like the first thing that I would say if I were advising you on what the source for Vineyard Vines, this is the first time in this video that I found something that I would say, yes, I would target Vineyard Vines clothing lots. Lots are tricky because they're harder to list. Uh, they take more screening, take more sourcing time. They can be higher buy-in cost. Um, how I resold them was if I happened to get lucky and I found a lot all together in one thrift store and there was a lot of meat on the bone, then I would resell it. What a lot of people do, especially if they source at the bins, uh, which is Google, out, uh, Google outlet, the Google outlet, the Goodwill outlet where you can get stuff for cheap, is you sock it away in a drawer somewhere and you just have it in your head that you have a stockpile of this stuff. It doesn't have to be all from the same brand even. It can all be the same size or roughly the same measurements from different brands that are kind of related. Like someone did this here, Vineyard Vines and Lily Pulitzer. And this is kind of typical. A lot of these brands, the lots will be what sell for the most. And here's a bizarro tartan plaid color blocked sport coat or blazer. Is it wool? They don't list the material. This is not a good practice. You should list the material somewhere. And the material is, that's the kind of plaid. That's not a fabric. So this is not something that you're gonna find, probably, probably ever, um, or certainly not commonly. There is an adage in reselling that, quote unquote, ugly sells, in clothing reselling anyway. I have found that to be a pretty decent rule of thumb. Here's another example, hideous, stupid blazer with horsies on it. This is weird, it's saying it sold at auction for 75, but it says here 140. I think this has to be right. Even so, uh, this person put it up for auction, which you probably should not do with clothing almost ever, uh, still sold for 75. Even if it did sell for 75, that's still good money. Boathouse Performance Blazer. All right, here is the first one that is kind of a head scratcher to me. Boathouse Performance Blazer. This one is wool. This does not look like something to my eye that should have sold for all that much. Vineyard Vines Boathouse. A lot of brands will have sub lines that are named like uh, Peter Millar's Summer Comfort is a good example that even if the rest of the brand is performing poorly, that subline will be in demand or worth more money. This is not one of them. Blazer. So I'm seeing a lot of navy blazers. 61 to 59. Okay, here is the next win. Ah, eBay has tricked us once more. We were in general. Okay, even so, that's even better. So that's a 2X sell through, that's crazy. So we have learned lots for Vineyard Vines and Navy Blazers are 
uh, selling well. This is a surprise because this usually doesn't happen. Suits in most brands are uh, one of the slowest selling categories. There are only a handful of exceptions to that. So this um, is running counter to my instincts. This is the importance of looking stuff up. And you will see also eBay has once again removed the condition tag from our search. So we were doing pre-owned and new. Pre-owned is even better. Believe it or not, this is often the case with uh, clothing brands. The pre-owned items on eBay will have higher sell-through than new with tags items a lot of the time. But there you go. We have figured out Blue's Clues. Let's see just blazers, period, because I saw another blazer in the solds. 39.2. 15, wow. So if you find um, sport coats or arguably even suit jackets that you could get away with considering a sport coat or a blazer, throw that in there, that keyword. You can also do this highest to lowest search in these categories as well. And the point of doing this is to find the sub lines that are worth more money because often those are the ones that are in higher demand too. So let's see if we can find some. On the go shorts. So in pre-owned, 139 solds to 115 actives. Well, let's double check. Look at this discrepancy. 115 here to 146. So 146 active to 139 sold based on these numbers. That's still really good. This is another win. Lots, blazers, on the go shorts. And you can run this for each category and I'm sure there are other little sub niches that uh, are in high demand. That is a very tedious, I promise, thing to go through on a brand by brand basis. That is essentially my methodology in writing the menswear manifesto. So I've done this for, at this point, 451 clothing brands in this document and in a supplemental document that I published more recently. The overall sell through rate, like I showed you, uh, an average overall sales price for the brand, and then I broke it down, each brand by category, and then I give more detailed notes about little sub niches that I find over the course of my research or uh, advice for what to look for, like really valuable stuff, or I get into the, uh, the entrails of these really big brands like Adidas and Nike and give you more detailed notes. This is a pay what you want product. There is a link in the description that will take you over to Gumroad. Figure out what it is worth to you. Uh, it has made a lot of people a great deal of money but if you don't want to use the manifesto, you can do this on your own and it's good to do on your own too. So I hope that this helps clarify how to think about clothing. Appreciate you watching.